I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Welcome to the Ex-Mormon Files, and I'm your host, Bishop Earl. I appreciate you spending some time with us. Tonight, I'm, today, I'm happy to welcome Lisa Munoz. Appreciate you coming and sharing your story. Thanks for having me. We got to meet your husband last week, I believe it was. So uh, anyway, an interesting story. Maybe you can tell us a little bit more about your perspective of, of his conversion. You were actually born in the church, right? I was. Um, so I was a member for 26 years. Yeah. And I was born into it. My parents were married in the temple. Wow. They were converts themselves. Mm. And um, I have three brothers, and I had a happy childhood. Yeah. Where was this at? Um, it was in Magna, Utah. Magna. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I used to. Okay. So just a normal kind of happy Mormon life, and yeah, we were in church and... we were kind of poor. But yeah. um, he wasn't in Magna. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I was busy and I enjoyed Young Women's. I loved it. Yeah. I, I loved primary. Um, yeah. I think Julio mentioned that you'd taken seminary. And... Yep, I went through seminary and yeah. I went through one semester of institute class. Oh, up at the at, at um, college? Or at Slick, yeah. yeah. Oh, good. And uh, I guess at the, in, the, in your youth, I don't suppose there were any real questions that came up, were there? Um, I kind of felt like there was maybe a lack of spirituality at church. Um, you really? Yeah, so I didn't, I thought that was kind of odd or unusual. Um, I was in like the Young Women's Presidency, so I would, yeah. made us do like the theme every week Yeah. Um, to try to be more spiritual. But other than that, um, I didn't have very many questions. Well, I just kind of went along with it. Interesting perspective. What, maybe explain that just a little bit about spiritual. You mean it wasn't about... God or Jesus? Yeah, I kind of felt like it wasn't about Jesus. Um, and like all of our lessons didn't really have anything to do with Jesus. And I wanted that spiritual, just more spirituality, I guess. Now, do you, did you sense at all that that was different than the other LDS in your peer group? or? Um, See, I never sensed that at all. That there was a, I should have probably, but I didn't ever sense a lack of... I think spirituality. I always kind of wanted to be an overachiever, like a goody tissue. Yeah. So I think that that was, that was partly part the problem. It. And did you, uh, I guess you prayed and read the Book of Mormon? I or? did. I prayed. I read the Book of Mormon. I attended all Wednesday night mutuals. And yeah. Did you ever read the Bible? Um, no, and, I didn't. Yeah. No, I, I did read um, John, like the Book of John. Did you? Yeah. And... Um, but other than that, like I just, I really didn't, I didn't feel a need to. Well, not to belabor this, but we know that the, the uh, article of faith, the eighth article of faith, it tells us the Bible isn't translated correctly. Uh, did that ever play in, do you, do you think, um, and you're not reading the Bible, or why wouldn't you read it? I think I felt discouraged because um, people would say, like, it's not worth the read, kind of, like, uh -huh. it wasn't translated correctly, there's so many errors in it, it's so complicated, so I just kind of went with that, like, okay, it's probably too complicated for me, so I'm just going to stick with the Book of Mormon and the I, Doctrine and Covenants. Yeah, I tackled the Bible a, a couple of times over the years, but uh, studying it was not 
very important to me. And yeah. It just wasn't a thing. But you did do baptisms for the dead. I did. At How 12 years old, I went through and I did baptisms. Again, I kind of felt like it wasn't spiritual enough. I really felt really awkward um, doing yeah. it. So I don't know whether it was because it was in the basement or not, but Maybe. I had this cold kind of feeling about that. I yeah. have to admit that as a child, I certainly felt that. But Yeah. Yeah. So you get through high school and... Uh, yep, I get through high school and I dated some missionaries and dated some return missionaries. And then I met my husband yeah. who um, was basically agnostic, but um, I thought he was really cute. So <laughs> I thought I could um, mission date him okay. and... Was your, was your family upset that you were dating a Christian? I mean, not a Christian, but a non-Mormon? Um, not really, because he wasn't Catholic. Oh. So I think they were okay with it, um, really? because I think we all kind of believed that he would um, yeah. become a Mormon eventually. Now, he said he, he thought he had thoughts of getting back to California, but fell in love, and you fell in love. You were yeah. So you talked him into staying, I guess, huh? Yep. Yeah. yeah. So did you bring the missionaries in, or did they just happen by? They just happened by. Um, in fact, I was at work, and they really? came by, and um, I came home, and uh, Julio said that they were going to come back again, and, so they, and they did, and I was excited. I'll bet you were excited. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because so. you'd wanted it. I mean, dating return missionaries, you were looking to be married in the temple. And, yeah. 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 So it was so. exciting. Well, how, how long was that process for Julio? Um, so we married in 2000. I'm really bad with dates, but oh, we married in 2000 right. and he was baptized in 2001. Okay. And, um, How long did it take him to study and kind of decide to get he baptized? He went through the lessons, so I think they come like once a week. He went through the lessons and then by the whatever lesson it is that they ask you to get baptized, he decided to get baptized. Okay. So. Do you th feel like he did it for himself or for you or just to, um, not I've, to keep peace in the family, but maybe... Right. I feel just, like he probably did it for both, like, oh, my wife is Mormon, and I don't see anything wrong with it, so yeah. I'll go ahead and do it. And you're being baptized into the Church of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. of Latter-day Saints, so it... Uh, yeah, yeah. So he had to feel good about that. So life just now goes on, and... Yeah, so we have, um, we had our first child at that time, yeah. and um, Julio had been baptized, then we had the baby, and then um, with that baby, we realized that there was, when he was born, we realized that there were some physical issues with him. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, that was kind of my starting point of just um, spiraling down, I guess. And uh, With the church, you mean? With the church, the with life kind of in general. Mm -hmm. um, I felt like I had obeyed the word of wisdom. I felt like I had done everything I should have done. So I was very kind of, defunct mm -hmm. that this had like happened you were to me. being punished or I did feel like I was being punished and mm -hmm. I felt like it wasn't fair and um yeah I was just very angry so I would kind of sporadically go to church but I was yeah. very angry but it started making you think why what's all that this God thing about and yeah 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 it started to make me think and it kind of made me think like well okay because you know being brought up LDS you kind of believe like that Either you get a special needs child, so you're, you know, that child is really brave in heaven special, or special. Yeah. And I'm like, well, this doesn't make sense because this isn't going to benefit him yeah. at all in life and um, won't mm -hmm. keep him from sin. So it mm -hmm. didn't make sense to me. And in this process, did was Julio okay with things? And did, or was um, he bringing up questions ever? And so at the same time, um, Julio started to not feel well physically. Um, yeah, he mentioned that. Yeah, he started to be depressed and have anxiety, and we were searching out medicine for him and, and just searching out help. And Were you really worried, I guess? Yeah, I was worried. Mm -hmm. um, he was at work one day, and I think he had a panic attack, and oh. the ambulance came and um, oh, everything. Gosh. So we were, we were really concerned, and we couldn't find answers. And um, at that time, we had our second son, and... Um, so Julio kind of went down the path where he really needed help. He desperately need, needed help. And um, my brother, who was a bishop at the time, mm. I called on the phone and I said, hey, you got to come over and pray for my brother or for my husband. And um, my husband called his friend to get his pastor to come pray for him. Mm. And then this is when like the war started to really? rage. Yeah. Did yeah. they both come? Or? They both came. My brother came late. 
Oh. And so the pastor was able to pray for my husband, and my husband went to go to the doctor as well. Yeah. Yeah. Now, he said, I guess that was his moment when he was at his lowest point and mm -hmm. turned his life to Christ. And I yeah. don't know that we really got all that full story there. Do you have a perspective of what he did or said? Yeah, so he continued to go to church where the pastor had prayed for him, mm -hmm. and um, he was shown the gospel um, of grace and of Jesus and that Jesus is our healer and um, he he got saved at church and mm. um, so he started to go on his Christian journey and I was kind of left uh -oh. out. What did your brother think, the bishop? Um, my brother thought that it will pass that um, with Julio. Yeah, 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 that he would come back. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of let it go for a while, getting more angry and more bitter as the time went on. And it was so hard. Yeah. So I went to talk to my bishop, and my bishop told me that, well, you know, I was concerned um, about my marriage, and he said, yeah, you know, it might end in divorce. And that is what got me Your thinking. Bishop did. Yeah. Did he recommend that, you mean? Or no, just he that just kind of cautioned me that that okay. might be an area that it would go down. And it made me think that was really odd because we're so family oriented and we're Christian too. So mm -hmm. why would it matter? Like all of a sudden I started turning the tables. So it should be around. more encouraging people to be patient and show love and, and yeah. understanding. And, yeah. You know. Did uh, Were there questions that were coming up though that were making you think too then besides these um, experiences or so i uh, i believe that the lord was constantly all through my life showing me things that so were wrong you can see that now when you look back and i look back yeah. and so at that point um julio had wanted to take the boys to a church event for new year's eve a and christian church a christian church event, church event. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh no, not without mom. So oh, I so went, went and I sat down and it was a Spanish one. Yeah. So now, do you understand Spanish? I don't. Okay. <laughs> and they were dancing and they were singing and they were clapping and they were praising the Lord. Yeah. And I had my oldest son on my lap and I told him that this was so stupid and it was ridiculous. <laughs> and he turned to me and said, mom, don't you love Jesus? And that's what um, turned my heart around. And I realized I don't, I don't. Why would I? He's not that special. And um, so I was shared the gospel and I received it. Right then? Um, it took a couple of months, but um, I eventually came around and I saw God just kept showing me things, kept showing me things that were wrong with LDS and kept showing me things that were right with Christianity. I'm just so amazed the difference that look that we have at Jesus now compared to the LDS Jesus. It's completely well, different. Yeah, people say that, or Mormons say, well, we believe in Jesus, but... It's in the me. name of the church, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, it, and we probably do believe in the same historical Jesus. Mm -hmm. But theologically, it's a totally different. What, yeah. How would you explain that? Um, so the Jesus of, Jesus of Mormonism, um, I, I couldn't look up to him. I didn't... Well, he just happened to be first in line, yeah. right? I didn't really in. understand um, what he did for me. Um, it didn't seem that important to me. Because um, you're having to do a lot of it yourself, right? Yeah, you and I always working. felt like I was disappointing him or disappointing Heavenly Father. Um, but the the Jesus of the Bible, like, he's so loving and he's so um, concerned for us and he's yeah. God. And that, that's completely different than Mormonism. He didn't have to become God. He is God. And it was willing to come to the earth and go through what he did. Right. The death, burial, and resurrection. Right. Paying for our sins. Right. And it's so simple and, and so straightforward. Yeah. Yeah. And you, and you never knew that as a Latter-day Saint. You never heard that in seminary. No. Sure. No, yeah. years and years and years of like how to be a good person, but not, not anything about Jesus. Not that way. I'm just amazed. And, and I just... I, Yes, I keep hoping that people will listen to these programs and also start studying the Bible and, and start realizing who this Jesus really is. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so have you, uh, so after you went to the bishop, you, mm -hmm. did that bring up, raise questions with you and Julio about whether to stay together or not? Or yeah. was this Christmas thing um, shortly after that? No, it was about a year. Oh. It was a year of... Um, 
not really having a happy marriage, and, yeah. which is very difficult for us because we're best friends, yeah. and I adore my husband, and um, so it was it was very difficult. It was a year of him going to church and me staying at home, bitter and simmering. And he was going to a Christian church, mm -hmm. and you were, and you weren't you weren't going to the LDS church at that point. No. Uh -huh. mm -mm. No, I I just didn't know where to go, what to and do. So after the Christmas, then then how long ago did or how long after that did you say that you started after the Christmas? So program? from the Christmas, I started to go to a Christian church in March. After oh. that, yeah. So and what did your your son was was he sensing and feeling a, a different Jesus here at this activity? Yeah, yeah, he didn't. Um, um, thankfully, we didn't really like submerge the boys in Mormonism. We kind of just went periodically, but mm -hmm. um, he, my boys both just loved Jesus and fell in love with him. And um, yeah, they enjoy going to church now. Yeah, they did. They did. Yeah, yeah. and we kind of um, went church shopping to look for a church yeah. that spoke English and <laughs> um, that we wanted to go to, and yeah. um, that's where we landed at Lifeline Community. Yeah. And they have a great program, I guess, for. The youth and yeah, the, the yeah. kids and Our stuff. Our one son is in Sunday school and the other one um, is in youth group now. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think the Christian or Mormons most misunderstand about Christians? Um, when I was Mormon, I would think Christians like thought, oh, I could just say a prayer and I don't have to do anything. And, um, yeah. you know, like, oh, once I'm saved, I can go kill somebody. Like, you know, you, you just kind of... do anything because I'm saved. Yeah. Right. Um, I think they think it's a joke or that we um, don't know what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, that we don't have the gospel because it was taken away, but mm -hmm. Jesus himself said, no one will take this gospel, not even the gates of hell can come against it. Yeah. And I think that Mormons don't understand that. They don't understand that Jesus is the foundation yeah. of Christianity. And that there's love. And when you have love for God, Jesus, and your fellow man, then you want to do good works. Right. But that doesn't save us, right? Right. I mean, anyone can do something good, yeah. but um, everyone does bad. And so without the saving grace of Jesus, like... Now, did you, as a us. Mormon, did you know you were a sinner? Um, yeah. I mean, in, in terms of knowing you weren't, you were, uh, you weren't, uh, you were committing sins or something, mm -hmm. but you never really thought of yourself as a, um, well, I, I don't know, put words in your mouth, but... I just felt like, well, I'm not doing big sins, right. and so because I got married in the temple and I did all the things I was supposed to, I'm going to get to the celestial kingdom and right. it'll all work out. But I never considered myself a sinner in need of a savior to that extent, right. because I just figured I would do all my good works and Jesus would pick up the last little bit. Yeah, that's kind of how I looked at it. Like, I knew yeah. I was a sinner, but I didn't do the outrageous sins, and I yeah. knew the truth, and yeah. um, so I thought that I would be okay. Yeah. Um, and I didn't really I didn't really pay too much attention to it. Like, even when I was doing things I knew I shouldn't be doing, I was yeah. like, well, you know, I do all this good I stuff. I can repent. And, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, for me, it was like, oh, I can repent and just not do it again, but yeah. that that's kind of hopeless, so... Oh, well, it's just so interesting that uh, that we have this concept of of Jesus in the in the LDS Church that he just happened to be again first in line. He's yeah. our elder brother, and that Satan's our brother. Yeah, and that just doesn't match up with what the Bible teaches. And it surprises me that people back in 1820 and 1830 didn't maybe probably just like we are today, we don't know the Bible that well. So when Joseph Smith comes along with right. this other gospel or this new gospel, people just accept it without comparing it to the Bible. When I think naturally, we have a natural bent, natural tendency to want to do things ourselves. And so when we can earn our own way and we can or work really hard, in charge, huh? yeah, then we can have that satisfaction. Yeah. And yeah. if you don't know your word and don't know that you can't, do that yourself, then it's easy to fall into the lies. Yeah. Well, I felt, I sensed that Julio had a, a, a really a great spirit about him. Did you notice a difference in his, in his life when he came to, to know Jesus? Um, that's a really hard question because I was so angry and bitter, um, yeah. that I, I wasn't looking at that, but now like in reflection, I can see that. Yeah. yeah. I can see, um, that it was different and that he, um, just was going to church for a different reason and, and that yeah. he was in love with the Savior and, and that just added to my bitterness. And how about you? Um, my life is completely different and I look at the Bible like it's so interesting and yeah. it's amazing how much is in there and how it's all sufficient and yeah. 
Um, I love going to church. Like it's not a dreaded three hour long <laughs> Sunday chore, but it's yeah. something I enjoy to do. Well, when you were younger, you said you were looking for spirituality. Yeah. And do you sense that more now as, as a Christian? I do. I, I sense um, a higher spirituality in, a, in the sense that I have Jesus as my friend. Yeah. And like it um, is more than just spiritual. It's, it's a knowledge of, of who he is and what he can do for you. Isn't it wonderful? It is. And it's funny when you were talking earlier about the Bible not being that, all that important. Mm. You kind of pass by it. And I felt the same way. Now, I can't get enough of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Isaiah, like as a Mormon, you just kind of get told, like, oh, no one understands Isaiah, so don't really yeah. read it. Um, I love Isaiah, and I just love the descriptions of, like, who Jesus is. I mean, yeah. it prophesies of him all throughout the Old Testament and into the New Testament, and it's fascinating. Yeah. And the letters of Paul mm -hmm. and what they teach us about Jesus and the gift of grace and... Oh, it's yeah. just amazing. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and, and your family is together. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, yeah. It's like God answered right at the right time. Yeah. Um, now, you, you say your father's passed away. Your mother and family, brothers, uh, have you been able to share with them at all? Yeah. Um, it's the a bishop? Yeah. <laughs> the bishop brother? <laughs> yeah, it's a little hard. They're not, um, they don't really want to listen. Mm -hmm. Um they're sad that I left the church, so we kind of just don't talk about it. Um, I try to share differences, but they always try to make it sound the same. Like, oh yeah, we believe that too. Yeah. Um, no, you don't. Yeah. But they just don't want to listen. One thing I've noticed in my family is, and it, as a Mormon, it was just normal to go weeks, uh, to go on vacations or do anything with them, with them and never talk about God or Jesus. Mm -hmm. I mean, we talk about who's getting married in the temple, who's going on a mission, or what callings do you have, and you know, what are you doing in the church, that kind of thing. But we never talked about Jesus, right. or the Bible, or anything that was spiritual. Right. Do you notice that too? Yeah, I mean, growing up, you know, it was always like mutual, Sunday school, we're gonna go to church. Um, but now it's like Jesus and Jesus and how good is Jesus? And every time we yeah. go to church, like that's all people could talk about is what he's done that week, how good he is. Um, mm -hmm. You, he's so alive. And the and the music and that you notice. Uh, tell us the differences that you've noticed in music. Um, it's not boring. Yeah. It's praising. It's worshiping. It's not self-serving. Yeah. Um, there's just life behind it. Yeah, the words are all praising yeah. Jesus, aren't they? Yeah, and it's it's fascinating because as LDS, you're told not to pray to Jesus. You're told not to worship Him, that we only worship the Father. And yeah. being Christian, you realize, for one, that there was absolutely no worship going on in Mormonism. And for two, like Jesus is our King, and, and He deserves all the worship and all the praise. Yeah. Was there anything that uh, in your either Mormon time or now as a Christian that you a doctrinally that really struck you so differently. Anything else that you we've talked about Jesus and right. grace a little bit, but anything else that kind of? Um, I think just temple work in general. Um, Isn't that interesting? Yeah, I you know when you back read back to the baptism for the dead, and well, the temple. Even in the Old Testament, like when you actually read um, what the temple was made for and all the slaughtering that went on there and the sins and the blood and that it's all about repentance and it's about. Um, it's really about God saving grace on us. Yeah. And in Mormonism, it has nothing to do with that. And yet it's something that they gloat about. Oh, well, we have temples like the Old Testament church. That's why we're true. Well, they're not the same thing. The same things don't go on there. Boy, um, I didn't understand that. Did you understand that? I had no idea. No. I had no idea until I cracked open the Old Testament where it really happened in the temple. Yeah. And then you're like floored because it's not at all the same. Yeah, I never understood that at all. And, you know, going through the temple and all the things that we did and and then realizing that that high priest used to go in and sprinkle blood yeah. once a year and then Jesus comes along and sheds his blood as our final high priest yeah and that's it he yeah. says it is finished yeah it's like such a beautiful difference yeah and yeah. so simple yeah everything is very simple as a Christian have your prayers taken on a little different perspective Yes, yeah, they're not like the same. I, um, dear Heavenly Father, you know, thank you for this day. Like, they're meaningful, talking, yeah. um, relational prayers. Yeah. For some reason, it seemed like my Mormon prayers, oh, oh I, I mean, there would be different times. I had needs and stuff, but you'd almost feel like they didn't get past the, 
the ceiling. Right. And now I feel like God's in me, and yeah. I'm in Him, and and I'm sharing and, and uh, talking to Him. Yeah, prayers can be so interesting because you can share your heart. You can thank Him for the day. It, it's full of worship. Yeah. There's so many different avenues that you can do yeah. in prayer. And have you appreciated people? I know this is a criticism uh, of the Christian sometimes, but don't you appreciate having an educated, trained person sharing this good news of the gospel? Yeah, so that was interesting because I was just recently talking to my brother about our pastors and that they're paid staff and paid pastors. And he's like, yeah, well, you know, we don't believe that. And, yeah, and I understand right. that. But, um, you know, our pastor has a, doctrine, a doctorate and he... Um, understands religion, not just Christianity. He understands theology yeah. and he teaches well. And um, it's, it's so helpful. It's so helpful to have somebody that knows the gospel and knows how well, to teach it. And the church can be very hypocritical about who gets paid because they certainly have a paid clergy. It, is, it isn't at our level with bishops and state right. presidents, but they certainly have a paid group of people that serve. But I just love having pastors who can share and teach and open up one or two verses and just share things that I've never thought of before. Right, and teach you contextually yeah. and teach you properly um, what what it is actually yeah. saying. Well, yeah. Lisa, we're just about out of time already. Um, anything you care to share with your family or friends or the audience? Um, just, you know, I think the most important thing is to read the Bible, um, to get into yeah. God's Word. Um, to see what he really says about himself and just know for yourself like um, Jesus says that he's the way the truth and the life and if we ignore that if we go any other way there yeah. is the only way to heaven he that believeth in me believeth in me hath everlasting life yeah and it's, it's so freeing it's a beautiful simple message and it is freeing isn't yeah, it don't you it feel is. a burden off your shoulders I do. Because you do. know you can't do anything anyway. It's Right. So, so everything I do is, is just joy. Everything I do is just giving back to the Lord. Yeah. But nothing, I don't have to earn anything. I don't get to earn anything. He did it all. Yeah. Well, we can never, I was always struck by that. We can never put God in our debt. And yet Mormons say in, our, in Doctrine and Covenants that God's bound when we do what, what, we, yeah. what He says. Yeah, that's so crazy. Yeah. He's, he's all powerful and... And it's amazing when you put your whole trust and your whole heart and life and soul into yeah, Him. Yeah. Well, Lisa, thank you so much. Thanks. It's been fun to meet you and Julio and, and your wonderful family. And thanks. got two great kids. Those are sweethearts. Yeah, so. they're beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So thanks for joining us. We'll see you again.